just an ordinary swimmer. And two days later, I'm breathing underwater. It's really pretty easy. Well, I guess I was scared at first, but Pepper's a great teacher. One of the first lessons was how to clear your mask when water gets in. It's great to breathe underwater, but it's nice to be able to see, too. Especially since you have to use sign language to communicate. dangerous. Okay, class, let's get started. Boy, when she said school, she really meant it. I'm ready, Miss Thornton. Now, the thing you gotta remember about diving is when you're down there, you're under a lot of pressure. Hey, I can perform under pressure. No, I mean real pressure, like atmospheric pressure. When we're up here on deck, we got the pressure of a few miles of air on top of us. That might not seem like much, but it is. Right now we have about 15 pounds of air pressing on every inch of our body. That's called one atmosphere of pressure. Go down 33 feet and you have twice as much, 30 pounds a square inch. That's from the weight of the water? You've got it. Go 66 feet under and you've got three times the pressure you have up here, three atmospheres. Don't you get squashed? Not at that depth. Your body's mostly made of water, and it's kind of hard to compress water. But it's still dangerous to go deep. Did you know that your body can absorb gas? I guess so, oxygen? Good. But it can also absorb nitrogen. Under pressure, it absorbs more. And that's poisonous? I hope not. Air's mostly nitrogen, and your tank's filled with air. But if you get too much nitrogen in you when you're down there under pressure, and you come up too fast, the nitrogen in your body bubbles out because you're taking the pressure off. It's like taking the cap off of a soda bottle. And it's bad when it bubbles out? Let's say it can cause serious complications. Complications? Like what? Like death. Well, it doesn't happen very often, but it can cause serious damage to your body. Is that what they call the bends? Precisely. That's why we have to be careful how long we stay down underwater. Okay, now we'll go to the bottom and pretend you're out of air. We'll practice buddy breathing. After that, we'll pretend you're out of air and do an octopus ascent using my extra regulator. Remember what you do while you're coming up? You remember to always keep breathing. Right, why? Because if you hold your breath, your lungs can explode. Right again, why? Because when you ascend, the air in your lungs um, expands when you come up to less pressure. Perfect. This afternoon, 
I go on my first real dive. 40 feet down. Hey, do you remember this hotel? Hi, CT. Okay, jump. Boom. Good. Oh, everything okay? We've yeah. got all the permits. Two solid days of paperwork. Well, I'm glad somebody's worried about the coral. Hey, Pepper, how you doing? Captain told me you were on board. Get myself a bit. Uh, no mucho. <laughs> you must be Quiche. Yeah. Hi, Pepper. What you been doing, CT? Oh, nothing much. Hanging around, diving. Scuba diving? You know how. Well, I'm learning. Great, CT. You coming with us this afternoon? He sure is. Great. Okay, let's go. Captain, I made a sketch of your theory. The fire, the temple, the reef, the Mimi. That's about right? That's it. You should find an opening in a reef right there. Well, we'll check it out. If there is a passage through the reef here, then you can get through it, and we'll know where to start our dig. Hey, CT! Vamanos! Okay! You stick close to Pepper, CT. to dive. Oh, a couple of years, kiddo. Growing up sure takes a long time. Better watch it, Kiche. I don't remember saying that. It was yesterday. <laughs> you like to take a little cruise. We don't have to go down 40 feet in order to check out the bottom. We still lined up with the lighthouse on the reef? No. Well, as far as I can tell, and with the reef nearby, there should be all kinds of fish for us to feed. All set? On three, huh? Yeah. Uh -huh. You ready? Okay. Hey! Hooray!
What? It's Stella. What's that? A Maya monument. Are you sure? I can even see the date glass. <laughs> well, let's get it. I'm soon moving till my mom sees where it is. Come on, I'll show you. See how it could be in such good condition. It must have been buried in the sand for centuries. Yeah. That hurricane last month must have churned up the bottom, uncovered it. How are we going to get it up? That's a good question. We could use air. We used to salvage gear from sunken ships that way. Good idea. Let's do it. CT, get that orange net bag and some plastic trash bags from under the galley sink. Okay. I'll go get you some scuba gear. like I did in the second voyage of the Mimi, can teach you a lot about pressure and what it does to you. But it did make me wonder about some things, so I came here to try to get a few answers. This is the North American Hyperbaric Center on City Island in New York City. Hyperbaric means high pressure. The people who work here should know all about it. At least I hope they do. The reason I hope they do is because today they've promised to put me into one of their high pressure chambers. But first, I get a lesson on just what pressure is all about. Glenn Butler? Yeah. Ben Affleck. Hi. Glenn Butler is one of the diving experts at the center. He started out by showing me a small hyperbaric chamber. We can pressurize this to a depth equivalent to 10 atmospheres, 10 times atmospheric uh -huh. pressure. 10 atmospheres of pressure? How do you get that much? Well, we have air cylinders outside that 
push air into this chamber. And because the volume is fixed, as we push air into the chamber, the pressure goes up. But by the volume being fixed, I mean, there can never be any more space that the air can take up. That's right. So it has this to become a, more dense. This is a steel chamber, and it doesn't expand like a balloon. Okay? Mm -hmm. So it holds its shape. As a matter of fact, it's over four inches thick in spots. Okay? It has to be that thick to hold 10 atmospheres of pressure. Just walking around, we're all under the weight of the atmosphere, about 100 miles of air, producing 14.7 pounds of pressure on each square inch of our bodies. We all know that water is a lot heavier than air. It takes only 33 feet of water to produce the same pressure as 100 miles of air. That pressure, 14.7 pounds per square inch, is called one atmosphere of pressure. I brought along a bunch of different things to put into the chamber. I wanted to see what pressure did to them before I found out what it would do to me. We started with a basketball. A basketball is hard because of air pressure inside the ball, about seven pounds per square inch more than atmospheric pressure. I sure couldn't squeeze it much. It was hard to imagine how just air pressure could. It needs to be heavy to hold back all the air pressure. Okay, now. We'll swing this big hinge around here. <laughs> swing it shut. This door has to hold back 46 tons. 46 tons? That's right. That's right. Okay. 130 PSI, which is pounds per square inch, at 10 atmospheres, okay, over this whole door area, which is two and a half feet in diameter, adds up to 46 tons. So why don't we step around over here to the controls. Over here? Yes, right around this way. All right. Now, this valve here lets air into the chamber, mm -hmm. and this gauge shows up to 700 feet sea water. Okay. And we're going to work in the first 300 feet or we're 10 We're going to go 300 feet? Sure are. They measure pressure at the hyperbaric center in feet of seawater, as if they were underwater. That's because it's a dive school. But of course, the chambers are actually dry, and the pressure is produced by air. Make sure everything's shut that should be, and we'll begin to compress. Can I look in here? Sure can. Okay, we're at 10 feet, then 10 feet of seawater. Uh -huh. and, and compressing. Whoa! Look at that. All 20 of feet. Just in. We're at 20 feet now. 30 feet, 33 feet. We're now at two atmospheres pressure inside. That's twice normal atmospheric pressure. And the volume of the ball is roughly one half its original volume. 60 feet. Yeah. 66 feet. We're now at three yeah. atmospheres. We're now at three times normal atmospheric pressure. At three atmospheres, or triple the atmospheric pressure, the ball contains one-third the volume of air. At four atmospheres, one-fourth, and so on. 165 feet now, that's six atmospheres, six times normal atmospheric pressure. We haven't let the air out of the ball, right? I mean, there's still the same amount of air in there, is that right? Yes, the same amount of air is in there, but we have squeezed it. We're using outside pressure on the ball, We've squeezed the air on the inside of the ball much smaller. Okay, well, we're at 10 atmospheres right now, 10 times normal atmospheric pressure, and the volume of gas inside is actually almost one-tenth the original volume. That really is flat. Okay, shall, okay, we, shall we depressurize yeah, it? Yeah, let's see it come okay. inflate right back up. All right, keep an eye on it. Now we're going to go from 10 back to the surface now. We're letting air now out of the chamber. 160, 160 feet. Just passing 66 feet. That's three atmospheres, three times normal atmospheric pressure. Okay, now it's halfway filled. Now, now it's halfway filled. Right. So now it should come. 33 up. feet. Now the volume inside the, the basketball is going to double now. Between 33 feet. Whoa! And the I wish I could blow this up every time like this. But I guess it's not really being blown up, right? No, we're just, we're I mean, just it's the same amount of bringing air. the forces back in balance so that 
what the pressure what the pressure should be inside that balloon when uh, the, the basketball when it's back at, at seven sea pounds, level. Seven pounds, right? About seven psi. There it is. When we took the basketball out, back into one atmosphere or 14.7 pounds per square inch pressure, it was right back to normal. Now, when it was in there, it was exposed to how much you couldn't squeeze that down like that. Could no. You? Neither can I. About 130 pounds pressure at 300 feet sea water. 130 pounds per square inch? 130 pounds for each square inch. If you were in there at 130 pounds, wouldn't you, wouldn't you feel like all this pressure on you or? Well, that's, that's one of the great differences between gas and liquids. Liquids are incompressible. You mean you can't press them down? You're a liquid. Well, mostly, right? You're mostly liquid, except for the air spaces, like in your lungs and your ears. And you'll learn about that a little bit later from Dr. Sanchez. Hmm. Right? But your body basically is a fluid, and it's not compressible. So that's so how people can go underwater. So you would get compressed if you went in there. You would, like, I wouldn't become like this basketball. No. I'd stay it because I'm mostly fluid. That's right. Have you ever tried putting any fluid in there? Yes. Matter of fact, let's do an experiment now where we compare water and gas. Okay? All right. All right. Let's get a couple of balloons and fill one of them with water. All right. All right. We filled one balloon with water and the other with air. That. They were just about the same size at one atmosphere of pressure. All right, now, the blue one has the water in it, right? And so that shouldn't shrink, and the yellow one's got the air. That's correct. 10 feet, coming up on 33 feet, two atmospheres. Coming up on 99 feet. Can you see the little air bubble at the top of the water-filled balloon? Yeah. Should that be shrinking? It's shrinking. Uh, at a really low depth, it would look like it had no air bubbles, right? It'll disappear. It'll actually be absorbed into the water. Oh, really? It'll dissolve in the water. Gases can be absorbed in liquids. And the more pressure is applied, the more gas is absorbed. That's how nitrogen gets in a diver's blood, sometimes causing the bends. That's how, that's how soda is carbonated. They take it down, they pressurize it, and it By pushing the... gas, carbon dioxide usually, into the liquid. We're approaching 165 feet. And that's six atmospheres. Is the pressure inside that balloon, of, I mean the water in the water balloon, the same as the air pressure? Yes, but the blue balloon is not compressible. The water inside it is not compressible. But it still is at the pressure of the air. They're both at equal pressures. Okay. Is that the same with our body? It's not compressed, but it's still, like inside my body, is that pressure? That's right. At any given depth in the ocean, scuba diving, the water pressure is exerted all over your body and is transmitted through your body. Okay, well, we're at 230 feet now. You want to stop and take it back? Yeah, let's stop and take it back and try something else. When the pressure on the balloons was released, the one filled with air came right back to its original size, doubling in the last 33 feet. There we are, just about at the surface. I was reassured by the water balloon. I mean, it looked like my body, being mostly water, would survive the hyperbaric chamber. But the next experiments had me worried again. Okay, begin compression. Two light bulbs, an egg, and a gas can. The gas can developed a leak, so it never completely collapsed. And until we reached 300 feet of seawater, or over 130 pounds of pressure per square inch on the objects, it didn't look like anything much was going to happen. That was pretty skill. Oh, wow. It sure goes off with a bang, doesn't it? Yeah. It, it exploded. It imploded. It didn't explode. What do you it mean it imploded? Imploded. The gas pressure on the outside was great enough that it actually collapsed or imploded. Break, Glenn sense? explained why the egg and the other bulbs survived the pressure. First of all, a raw egg is filled with liquid. Plus, gases like air can actually pass through the shell which is one reason a chick can live in there. It also has a shape that can withstand a lot of pressure. The best shape for that is a perfect sphere. This is more close to a sphere, and it's another reason why it's so strong, mm -hmm. is that now the force is divided equally over it, and it compresses it. And glass on compression is very strong. So that's why this stayed in shape. And the other one broke because back at the shank, which was exaggerated, it had a long area that was flat. And that was a place that could get pushed on. Next, we tried another can, one we hoped wouldn't leak, and a rigid plastic container. Maybe you didn't get a good seal on that plastic. It's not really crushing. Whoa! 
Well, the plastic is more rigid than the steel, believe it or not, in the can. Whoa, it's been flexing it. Watch real close now. Yeah, I'm watching. <laughs> now I was beginning to worry again about going into the big hyperbaric chamber. And our last experiment didn't make me feel any better. I think you're just about ready to go under pressure yourself, so let's see what might happen to your head. All right? We'll put one inside <laughs> okay. and we'll keep one outside for comparison, all right? All right. I think Glenn was just having fun with me. The styrofoam head is made up of thousands of little plastic bubbles filled with air. Should I close it up? Yeah. Start compression. Okay. You think this is going to happen to my head? Well, what's your head full with styrofoam, <laughs> which is the possibility. It's disgusting. It looks like something from a horror movie. It does. It does. It looks like science fiction. In the back, it looks like his head's going to pop or something. Oh, that's really gross. 270 feet. We're almost at 300. Some of the tiny air bubbles in the styrofoam must have burst because the head never did come back to its normal size, even after we took all the pressure off. Well, that doesn't happen to my head going under there. But I guess it won't because my head's not made of air bubbles, hopefully. Now it's my turn to get squashed. I know it won't hurt me, but... I'll be under the pressure of a hundred-foot dive, four atmospheres of pressure, and I just can't forget that head. <laughs>